Hi, welcome to summer yoga. I'm going to start our practice sitting back on the heels on our mat. So if we have props on our mat for meditation, just moving them to the side. And I'll give you some time to get yourself set up. If you need extra padding for the knees, I use a blanket that also fits underneath the feet so that your, your shins are all on one level. Or you can use a bolster or a blanket or something, a block underneath the hips. And as best you can, begin to find a straight spine. So a lot of times when we come into this position, when we forward, we want to try and bring ourselves directly over the heel. And just resting on, on the thighs or at your thighs, whatever feels right and comfortable to you today. And close your eyes. And begin to draw a breath down into the belly, filling the belly with breath. On the inhale, continue to fill, overfill, but breathing to capacity. And once you've reached your maximum, holding your breath. And then exhaling, drawing the needle in toward the spine with some force, blowing the air out of your nose as if you're blowing out a candle. We'll continue to breathe in that way, filling up the belly. And if you find yourself fidgeting where you are, just using props or blankets to make yourself more comfortable. We're just urging the knees and the thighs to open up. So you're breathing in. And breathing. Drawing the needle in toward the spine, emptying the belly of the breath. Continue to breathe in, fill the belly with chest and exhale chest, ribs, heart. Cultivating your ocean breath. Feeling the abdomen expand, contract. Begin to tune in to your face and your body. Any areas of tension, bringing your awareness to those spaces, allowing them to stop and stop and release. Perhaps you find an area where the breath is stuck. And you'll send your breath with greater force to that area to begin to create flow. So maybe the breath is getting stuck in the right shoulder. Send more breath through the right shoulder and down the right arm. On our next inhale, we'll send the arm out to the side in line with the shoulders, palms facing down, fingertips reaching out. And continue to take some deep breaths. 
So if the next few exercises are not sustainable for you to back on the heel, you can come down onto your bum with your feet out in front of you and continue to maintain a tall spine. So holding up like this, drawing the needle in toward the spine, crown of the head up to the sky. So it's your choice here. Another option for this alternative posture is to bring a block or something between the knees so that you're squeezing the knees with the legs together instead of letting the knees play out. Okay, so we're choosing our own adventure here. Arms out to the side. Either sitting back on the heels or sitting up straight with your feet in front of you, soles of the flat on the earth. Breathing in and breathing out. Turn your right palm up toward the sky, bring the left palm to the earth. Right hand comes up and over, opening the right side body. On the next inhale, come up. Right palm faces down toward the ground. Left palm up toward the sky. Right palm to the earth. Left palm up and over. Breathing into the left side rib. And inhale back through center. So if you are back on the heels, coming back on the heels, you'll shift your hips over to the side and bring your legs out in front for me. The rest of us. And we'll inhale the arms up. Everyone meeting here. Stacking the crown of the head between the shoulders, shoulders over hips. Maybe you feel a core engagement here. And then folding forward over the legs, tuck the chin in toward the chest, and hug yourself into a little ball. Inhale to. Open up, reach up toward the sky, find that straight side. And exhale, hug the needle in toward the spine, forward fold. So you can hold on to your ankles here, or hold your hands together, tuck the chin in front of the chest. And breathe that space from tailbone to the base of the soul. One more time, just like that on an inhale, reaching up toward the sky. Breathing that deep breath and then exhale to forward fold. Begin to send the right leg out long. Cross the left foot over the right leg. Sitting up nice and tall. Inhale the right arm up high. And exhale, right hand comes to left knee. Send the left arm out along the horizon line until you reach your left hip. Coming into a twist. Looking over the left shoulder, 
and try to keep a tall spine. Deep breaths here. And we'll begin to unwind. Send the left leg out long. Bend the right knee, right foot to the outside of the left. Crossing it over, sitting up nice and tall. Inhale the left arm up high. And then you can bring the elbow or the hand to the right knee, sending the right arm along the horizon line. Align with the right hip and over the right shoulder. It used to be propped up on fingertips. It's a block. Make space for your body. Breath in. Deep breath out. And we'll start to unwind. Right leg comes out to meet the left. So we've got our legs coming out long in front of us. I would encourage you, especially if there's tightness, to hold a blanket under the hips just a little bit. So we're not creating a big um, log. I don't know. Um, we're not creating a big fold here. Just enough that there's a little bit of support under the flesh in front of your bum. Sit up nice and tall. Inhale the arms out to the side. Inhale up. And exhale to forward fold over the leg. Add a little bend in the knee. Reach for the ground or for your feet. So your knees do not need to be perfectly straight. If your kneecaps have a tendency to cave in, add a little micro bend in the knee. And we'll inhale to come up. You see arms out to the side. So creating that T position or like you're coming into a bear hug. Inhale the arms. And exhale to forward fold. So this is the basic sequence. We're going to repeat that several times. I just keep alternating between these. Um, so inhale the arms up and wide. Draw the shoulder blades together. So you're really opening the chest here. Inhale the arms up. And exhale to fold over the legs. And especially in the morning, we want to give ourselves that extra little bit of sleep. Moving at your own pace. The most important thing I would say is breath. Close your eyes, perhaps, to surrender. And we have three more. And on your final, stay in that forward fold. Draw the shoulder blades together. Draw the chest forward. Wiggle the toe. And begin to walk your hand back toward your hips. Send your feet over to the right side, and we'll come back onto the knees. This time, all the way over into table position. 
So wrists are directly underneath the shoulders. Knees are under the hips. Feet are also hip distance apart. And again, for the protection of the knees, start to bring weight into the tops. So we're going to set some weight to the tops of the feet. Maybe alleviate some of the weight on the hands or the wrist. Begin to send some weight onto the shins, onto the tops of the feet. All right, and then shift that balance back to center, draw the navel in toward the spine. So as you engage your core, you'll feel there's less pressure on your wrists, on your knees, on your feet. And then climb into the earth. Press into the tops of the feet and just let the knees hover above the earth, holding your nice long spine to the back long. And you're holding your grip three, two, and one. Drop the knees, shift your hips back, turn the palms up toward the sky. You're just shifting your hips back toward your heel, breathe into your shoulder, breathe into your hands, maybe you wiggle your fingers. And then begin to bring yourself back to that table position. Inhale, drop the belly, chest and heart forward, keeping cow. And exhale, wiggle to spine for cat. So making space between the shoulder blades. You can take your time. This can be at your own pace. It can be wiggly or static. So when I say wiggly, Maybe as you come through, you move into the shoulders, the neck. In the morning, our practice is more about mobility and <laughs> moving into the connective tissue rather than deep stretching or coming into the muscles. Um, so little movements in each posture, micro movements, can be helpful. You're just signaling to the body, okay, we're waking up. Look at all different parts on the same page. And we're awake. We're doing this today. So three more rounds of breath in cat cow. And once you've completed those rounds of breath, tucking the toes under, walking your hands back towards your knees. A little stretch for the feet if you've got curly pinky toes and bring them out. Give them a stretch. Reach around behind you, interlace the fingers behind the back or hold onto opposite elbows. We're opening the chest here. And we're here for three, two, and one, come back to table position. Lift the knees up off the floor, hovering them here. Keep the neck long, toes are tucked. Draw the navel in toward the spine. And we're here for three, two, one. Send the hips back toward the heel. Draw the right heel down toward the ground. Keep the left generous bent. Lifting hips up toward the sky, your ears are in line with your elbows. Belly toward the thigh. And then lower the left heel, bend the right knee generously. And begin to lower both heels. Walk your hands back toward your feet. Feet are hip distance apart. So that's two fists between the arches of your feet. Outside edges of the feet in line with the outside edges of the mat. So this may feel a bit pigeon-toed to you. 
roll your inner thigh outward and point your knee up straight forward. So it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> All right. And just let the crown of your head bend your knee. Let the crown of your head rest down. Let your arms hang from the height of your shoulders and your body hang from the height of your hips. We'll start to send the arms out wide like you can fly and line up the shoulders and we'll lift up halfway. So you're still looking down. Spine is long, belly in toward the spine. And then exhale to release. So we'll do that with the breath. Inhale to lift up halfway. Keep that spine nice and straight. Exhale to release. Inhale to lift up. Draw those shoulder blades together. Exhale to release, just letting everything hang. So as you inhale, you can feel that effort. That engagement reaching out through the fingertips. And as you exhale, you just fold into it, release into it. Three more. Engage in the core. This may not feel like it, but they're all building blocks for our future classes. So just creating a memory or a knowledge in the body. And the next time we send our arms out wide and inhale all the way up to standing. Exhale your hands to heart center. Take a moment here to pause and feel me. And again, finding your feet. So hip distance apart, outside edges of the mind, outside edges of the mat. Inner thighs rotating outward. Creates a spread between the hips. Belly is lifted. Chest is lifted. We are nice and strong. And see if you can find the breath that we cultivated when we were seated in this standing position. So inhaling deep into the belly. And exhaling out to the nose. That sound, that beautiful ocean sound. Of course, out to the nose. In through the nose and out. All right, if you have anything on your mat, you're going to want to move it off and make space around your mat. We'll walk to the top. Again, finding that strong mountain position, keep the distance apart. Inhale the arms up. Exhale the hands to heart center. So we're just waking up the shoulders here. Inhale, put as much space as you can look up to the fingertips. Maybe add a little back bend here. And exhale the hands to heart center. So you're still moving things from your mat. Not to worry, you can meet us here with this sun breath. And where I am today, it's raining. So I'm reading a sun that's hiding. That doesn't mean it's not. And yeah. And exhale. See if you can close your eyes and make this moving 
meditation, observing the body from the inside out. I add a little bounce to me. We're not walking in the Back and to open the belly, feels nice. We have three more. Generous inhale. Generous exhale. Inhale the arms up and exhale to forward fold. Inhale, we'll take our halfway lift with the arms spread wide like we did fly. Drawing the shoulder blades apart as we reach out through the fingertips. That long spine, exhale to fold. And then inhale to come all the way up. Let the fingertips touch and then exhale, hands to heart. Okay, so we're going to do two more just like that. Inhale the arms up. Ah, that little back bend. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, reach out to the fingertips. Nice flat back. Exhale to fold. Inhale all the way up. Let the fingertips touch. Exhale, hands to heart. Again, if you can do this with your eyes closed, it feels so good to bring all of your senses inward. We're taking a forward fold. Halfway lift. Forward fold. And inhale to come all the way up to standing. Fingertips touch. Exhale the hands to heart center. All right, this time we inhale the arms up. Exhale to forward fold. So taking that sequence again, inhale halfway lift. Exhale to fold, plant the palms, step back to downward facing dog. So that's belly to the thighs, knees bent. Creating that length in the spine, lift the tailbone up toward the sky. So almost like you're tipping it toward the wall in front of you. Don't worry about your heels coming anywhere near the ground. That's not our concern. Lower the left heel, reach the right leg up high, stacking one hip over the other. If you can, bend the knee and bring the foot over toward the left side. So um, you're opening the front body. And then right foot comes back toward the earth. Right heel grounds, left leg lifts, stacking one hip over the other. You can stay here or bend the knee, flex the foot. Left foot comes over toward the right side. And when you bring the left foot back, Connect the big toes together, send the knees out wide and down to the ground. Come to the tops of the feet and send the hips back into a child's pose. So wide like a child's pose, turn your palms up toward the sky and let your hands blink or fingers wiggle. Ground your third eye, use this opportunity to massage that space, especially if you're suffering from allergies. 
this will be a nice little boot. Just massaging the forehead with the ground. Turn your palms back toward the earth. And ground the elbows. So we're, we've got our arms in um, already set up for a sphinx pose, arms parallel to one another. Maybe you move your fingertips up toward the top of the mat and then shift forward onto your belly. Tops of the feet, touching the earth straight out behind you. And Shoulders or elbows are directly underneath the shoulders. Lift your right leg and then your left. Just getting yourself situated on the ground here. Draw the shoulder blade, shoulders down the back. Create length in the neck. All right, so um, the first thing we want to do here is obviously to breathe. And then also pay attention to your wrists. So if your wrists are really lifting up off the ground, ground your wrists. And then close your eyes and allow yourself to hear it. And lift the right leg and reach out through the toes. Reach back to the toes. Nothing's changing in the upper body. And then lower the right foot. Lift the left leg, reach back to the toes. Just hovering it above the earth. Nothing big or extreme. Right toes are heavy, heavy. And then lower the left leg. Now the legs are a little bit longer in this posture. Start to send the left hand underneath the left shoulder, right hand under right shoulder, tuck the elbows into the side body. So we're already in a little bit of a back bend. See if you can lift up just that little bit more. So baby cobra. Kneecaps are hovering above the earth. Holding here. And then tuck the toes under. You can move up through a plank or shift back into downward facing dog. Pedal out the leg in down dog. All right, right leg comes up high. Right knee to the outside of the right wrist, but toward the left wrist. We're coming into a pigeon. Walk the fingertips back. We're not going to lie down or move forward into this one. We're going to sit here. Um, use props if you need to. We're not here for too long. Um, so a prop would be a rolled up blanket underneath the right hip and in the left hip flexor. Or blocks underneath the hands. So holding here, you can pulse. So just adding a little bit of pulse in your body, if that feels right. Deep breath. And then we shift over, drop onto the right hip and bring the left leg out long. So the right foot is to the inside of the left foot or the left leg. Reach for the left, the outside of the left foot. If that's not available to you, that's okay. Just walk your fingertips out on the outside edge of the left leg 
and then reach the right hand out of right hip up and over toward the left foot. Inhale up, rotate over toward the right side. Take a twist, left hand to the right knee, right fingertips behind you. Look around. That almost sounded like I was going to sing there. <laughs> I'm not. All right, and rotate back around. Walk the fingertips out toward or reach up toward the sky and fold over the left leg. So your choice here, um, you know your body in the morning, it's really, really tight. Just, just walk the fingertips out. You don't have to force anything. You don't have to expect anything from yourself. It will feel good whether you go deeper or not. All right, walking your fingertips back. Shift back into that hooking position. So sending the leg back behind you. And then we'll step back into downward facing dog. All right, and you may notice that there's a difference in your leg. Feels interesting. Left leg lifts up high. Left knee to the outside of the left wrist. Foot toward the right wrist. Unless your shin can go parallel to the front of the mat, just point your toes back. All right, and then walking the fingertips back toward the hips. We're sitting up in this position. Look to your back leg that is coming out straight from the body. Deep breath in, deep breath out, and you add the pulse. And um, something I should say is that if I'm saying something you missed what I'm saying, that's okay too. Um, there's something to be said for going with the flow in the class. And sometimes I repeat myself, so if you don't catch me one class, you'll definitely catch me in another class. I'm like, oh, that's what she's saying. <laughs> Feel free to modify your sequence. Dropping the left hip to the earth, right leg comes out long. And then reaching for the outside of the right foot or walking the hand from the outside of the right leg. Left hand out of left hip. So we're rotating chest and foot toward the sky, reaching for those left toes. Nice, beautiful deep breath. And as you inhale and come up, come into a twist, right hand to the left knee. Left foot to the right, inhale, left hand and exhale. And I'll share with you that card I pulled for today from the enchanted map oracle in his rock bottom. All right. Let's unravel and turn our hips toward the right leg. Either walk the fingertips out or inhale, reach up and exhale to hold. So this rock bottom part is talking about the inevitability of reaching a certain point. That all paths sort of be that way. So maybe there's something that's come up that feels like maybe you've made a different choice or taken a different turn. Um, but whatever you are experiencing or whatever you are about to experience has a flavor of the inevitable in it. But 
it's not an error on your part. Sometimes you have to come down and <laughs> meet the bottom in order to know our foundation. What are our values? What do we build everything else from? All right, end of lecture, walking the shears up, and then coming back into that pigeon position, and then transitioning back into the Let's drop the knees to the earth, send the hips to the side, and come all the way over onto our backs. Okay, so down, onto the back. Speaking of foundation, find those points of connection in the body. So we're going to keep our feet back to the let the knees drop into the center. So the soles of the feet are connected. The hips, the shoulder. We begin to move the knees from side to side to the side or back. Vasana is a time in our practice when our body teaches the mind language. We can integrate what we've learned, balance, movement, and action with breath. So I'd encourage you to take at least five minutes to minimum to rest in Shasana. Find peace in our mind, body, and spirit. Maybe bring a roll of blanket or bolster under the thigh. Good to bring your legs out long. And rest. This is a, a fairly gentle relax. It doesn't really matter. Feel good better than you did when you arrived here. Yeah. That's what happened. So rather than hitting the rock bottom, we're going to feel that earth rise up to meet us and hold us in the space. Maybe this is a place you know well. Remember that every time we come to similar spaces, the same, but maybe we we've grown and learned something. I'm here to build again. I'm here to examine my foundation. We're supported here in the space by the earth beneath you. Let the eyes soften or close, let the breath be easy.
Thank you so much for joining me in this practice. I wish you a beautiful day, always.